Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times, and you're playing with it. You're listening to The Men's Room. Welcome to the show number 2,791. Along with Steve the Thrill Hill. <whistles> the Ted Smith. <whistles> Robin Fox. <whistles> and my cock. Montgomery. In the Medro. On tap today, the drug in charge, Ryan Castles, in the Sit and Spin Now. Today, 10 songs that should not be played at a funeral. As the Men's Room is back, get ready to play Profile This. Plus, headlines, a Men's Room shot of the day, fun with listener emails, and everyone's favorite, TV time with Ted. Click, clack, drink a dead drug. All right, here we go. Police in St. Louis catch stolen car thief who goes by the name of Liberty Bell. We're on to Ohio, where a drunk woman wanted the Easter Bunny's groin to grow and to swell. Heineken ad features racist bartender who apparently only likes the white meat. New York restaurants now make money off of you going into their places and getting nothing to eat. And in a burger, uh, they file legal action against a YouTube prankster. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. <laughs> Hola, bitches. Good day to you and yours. All right. Our listeners in Kansas City are probably very, very familiar with the Schlitterbahn Water Park, which means you're probably also familiar with the story of 10-year-old Caleb Schwab. He was a 10-year-old kid who was decapitated at the park on one of the water slides. The raft went off the track. Kid literally was decapitated. This was back in 2016. Well, the park's co-owner and the park's director of operations, they've both been arrested in connection. 2016, not a very good year in that respect, especially for amusement parks. You might remember the two-year-old kid that was attacked and killed by an alligator at Disney World. That's supposed to be the happiest place on Earth, not the snackiest place on Earth. And Disney, of course, has downplayed the incident because, of course, you know, children eating gators is not really a good look for any business. But now Disney, they're dealing with a new lawsuit. In this case, it's a 59-year-old man, and his situation happened back in 2014. But he's looking for damages after he was bitten by a rat. We'll share a story in a minute. And look, sure, a rat is no gator, but still. And then as Easter approaches, the Easter Bunny making the rounds at local malls, local parks, all in an effort to terrify your children. Well, in Ohio, a woman spoiled the good times when her drunk ass decided to make lewd comments and then come onto the Easter Bunny. Keep in mind, the bunny's there to take pictures of children. Plenty of kids were there to hear exactly what this woman thought was sexy. But listen, this is what happens. You just want to have a good time, right? You don't take your kid to see the Easter Bunny to have a bad time. You take him there to have a good time. You never, you never, ever, ever go to an amusement park to do anything other than have a good time and then something goes wrong. But good times can always be planned, but the bad times always rear their ugly head. And that is what our question is today. It's a men's room fill-in-the-blank question. It was supposed to be a fun time. Then blank after it up. Be a part of the big show. Call 844-999. Only you can like the Men's Room on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Men's Room Live. And send those emails to the Men's Room at mensroomlive.com. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Hello, Michelle. And away we go. Welcome to show number 2,791. with a larger in charge program we have for you today. Guaranteed future repeat. What's going on? Already? Yep. The whole computer just blow up on you? Nah, just what I need. Drunk in Charge Ryan Castle is uh, coming in today to sit and spin with 10 songs that should not, should not be played 
at a funeral. If you happen to uh, like the Men's Room on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at Men's Room Live, some suggestions uh, are rolling in there on uh, 10 songs that should not be played at a funeral. Uh, keep them coming. Maybe they'll be uh, in, inserted into that list because uh, they're all pretty... Uh, they're entertaining in their own way, but definitely... You're all very sick. But. These songs should not be played at a funeral. Ask the Men's Room coming up. We'll drink and toast with a shot of the day. And, of course, another round of Profile This. And today on our Men's Room Blank Question, we talk about the good time that was supposed to be a good time. And then something bad happened. Uh, not sure if you heard the news. This is kind of a crazy story. And it comes our way out of a water park in Kansas City. And a water park co-owner, he has been arrested in connection with the death of a 10-year-old kid named Caleb Schwab. At the, who oh boy, Schlitterbahn Water Park. Schlitterbahn. Schlitterbahn. In Kansas City, Kansas. Jeffrey Henry, the park's co-owner, was arrested in Cameron County, Texas, according to a park spokesperson. Police did not immediately release the indictment for Henry, but the county's website lists aggravated battery and aggravated endangerment of a child as some of the charges that he faces. Caleb was decapitated while riding on one of the park's water slides. The raft he was on went airborne, and it killed him, and it also injured two other women. Now, what you have to understand about this guy is he kind of uh, he kind of built the slide on his own. I mean, on, like... He engineered this thing. Like, okay, okay. All right. All right. This wasn't something that you bought that was already in other parks or anything like that. Uh, this guy built it. He ended up being released on $50,000 bail. I guess there was a lot of warnings about this ride. I... Uh, he's not named uh, in the indictment against Miles and Water Park was unsealed. However, he is featured prominently in the indictment as the principal designer and visionary of the ride that killed Schwab. The indictment also notes that all Henry possessed no technical or engineering credentials whatsoever. Jeez, man. He controlled many key decisions in the design of the Schlitterbahn rides. Who accepts that? I'm not like, sure. If you're, like, if you're trying to design this thing for him and he says, I wanted to do this, this, and this. I understand he's the boss, but you still tell boss, look, when you put people's lives at stakes, you really, you really need to hear what we're saying. Mm -hmm. This is a bad idea. And I'm sure because they, the way they said the kid ended up getting decapitated, I guess the raft that he was on came flying off of what airborne the ramp, right? It went airborne. Mm -hmm. And, and then air obviously air as the kid's coming down, however they designed it, you know, the, the kid ends up losing his head literally on whatever he hit. And I would guarantee you, if an actual engineer designed it, like, certain things just can't be in certain mm -hmm. places. They believe it was a weight thing. So they call this thing, uh, the, the ride is called Verucht, the world's tallest water slide. Requires two to three riders to be strapped in a raft with a total weight between 400 and 500 pounds. The raft would then slide down a jaw-dropping 168-foot, 7-inch structure, only to be blasted back up a second massive hill and then send down yet another gut-wrenching 50-foot drop for the ultimate in water slide thrills. This, according to the park's website, the slide was certified by the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's tallest water slide. Ah, now mm. we get it. I'm assuming that this happened off of the second jump, and that's where the raft went airborne. The two women who were also on the raft suffered face injuries and lacerations, according to the investigation. Uh, the Schwabs, the family, uh, received nearly $20 million in the settlement. The settlement terms for the two injured women were not made available at the time. Uh, yeah, that's about all they've got on this. But they went to that guy's house and arrested him for just being basically in charge, the engineer, the designer, and all that stuff. You so, see four to 500 pounds. I mean, I don't know what these people look like, but a 10-year-old kid only counts for some of that weight. And then two other women, and that was it. I told you, man, I did one of those water slides oh, uh, that's just like you just feel like you, you kind of cross your arms and yeah. you cross your legs yeah. and you go down. It, it really does feel like you are free-falling, even though you're clearly not. I was not a raft, but it feels like you're free falling and your back is just being trickled with water. And then when you hit the bottom of it, you kind of slam down in the water sure. a little bit more and you start getting resistance. But during the actual drop, and the water's dropping obviously the same rate as you, so you don't really, you just feel like you're free falling. Yeah, but in theory, it's designed by an engineer. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, if yeah. someone said, oh, hey, by oh, the yeah. way, before oh, yeah. you get, you should know, uh, Curly Simpson standing over here, he owns the park, he designed it. Would you still get on? Well, if they said, by the way, what? he has no engineering actually, degree. Actually, I didn't. He and just now, has a tiny penis and a big idea. And you know like, those? Nope. When I was growing up in West Virginia, you'd have those the, those carnivals that would come around once or twice a year, and they would just kind of bring their crap on an eighteen wheeler, set it up in a parking lot of you know a Kmart again, or whatever the hell difference. there was, and it, then you just you rode those rides. And to me, even then, some of those rides, I thought they were shaking around and the weird rides noises. Are scary, like, and they are they're cheap. And look, I take my kids to the fair, and right the same as an adult, I'm like, man, oh man, I don't know who put this together. But but again, these are all rides I am familiar with. 
They have been battle tested. Yeah. You can ride these rides any freaking where. So even though you might not trust the fact that it's popped up out of the back of the eighteen wheeler, it's like I know for a fact this is designed by an engineer. I know for a fact that these things they're as safe as they're gonna be, right? I mean, because these things What's scarier? Is the ride scarier or the person who owns it, who delivered it, and who is the operator owner the operator. of the the operator scarier not the than, owner. The op the carney yeah. is the carney is the he carney. scarier than the ride itself Absolutely. as far as the danger involved. Because every time I wait in line, you know, the guy that, that opens the little gate for you to get on the ride and then the guy that makes sure you're secure mm-hmm. you know that you're looking at this dude and it's like a sixteen year old kid who's getting paid nothing. And I don't know about you, but the less you get paid, typically the less you care about your job, it's a summer gig because mom and dad didn't get a job. And you know, or it's some dude who I noticed only extinguished his cigarette when we made eye contact, you, and I'm walking toward his ride guys, with my uh, kid. You, you guys know? realize the people who are the independent owners of some of those rides and stuff, they only work in the summer for the most part, or five or six months out of the year. Well, yeah. And they go and they set up in a parking lot or a fair, whatever they are, however long it is, two to three days, and they pack their crack up, crap up, and then they drive to another place. Probably crack to. In another small town, and they do it again, and they do it over, over and, and over, and over, sure. and over, and over, and over. Uh, By the way, right, if there was an engineer... You think it at least would have been designed to withstand, what they say, five to six hundred? Four to five. Four to five hundred. Right. So you figure an engineer would probably have different standards. Like the rule is Absolutely. four to five hundred. It should be able to withstand mm. six hundred pounds coming down. Right, this. Without question. I yep. mean, and that's yep. that's why engineers get paid what they get. They get yeah. paid well for a reason because they, they do things to make sure you don't die. Sure. Uh, as far as water parks go, a comment came in and says, my friends and I went to Mexico when I was 18 and we went to a water park. I was nervous. I had never been on a water slide before. Now, my friends convinced me it would be a blast. So we walked up to the biggest, tallest tube slide. As I was sliding down, I get flipped off my inner tube, and I'm tumbling down the water slide. I shot out into the pool, and that's when I noticed I was bleeding from both my feet and my elbows. My toenail got ripped off. I still, oh. I still, oh. I still have scars, oh. both physical and mental. I've been on a tube and got an injury before at a water park as well, just because the tube... Started to deflate when we were going down, Wait, and by the time that I hit a bump, man, it was like it was like half out of air, and I just my ass, my, my tailbone slammed into it. it. Deflated. You talk about a bruise that you never expected to hurt so bad. <laughs> a tailbone bruise yeah. is retard. I mean, it's ridiculous how much the pain is. I mean, sure. I, I mean you yeah. can't find a comfort spot. And this uh, this was the same place where I it went. deflated. Oh, it deflated on me. Yeah. Now that one, I'm, I've heard people you know flying off of it, but not yeah, like the it defla- tube oh, itself no. deflated. Oh, it deflated. Yeah, you it was, could feel it, was, it as you're going down. Deflated. Oh yeah, it was like I mean, you know, like you're on it, and all of a sudden you're like, this is not good, right? Because there's people. So what they do is, all right, they send you down first, okay, and then at the top they have a green red light. So yeah. when you pass a certain spot, then it goes to green for the next person to go. Sure. I can feel the heat, man. I've, I've got this guy on my ass, man, and by the time like it's done, like his feet are in my back. <laughs> yeah, because he's I yeah. mean, he's pushing me down the the the, and I'm like, dude, I'm you know like I'm deflated. He's like, jump on mine. I'm like, I'm not gonna sit yeah, on your. I'm gonna dude. jump on yeah, yours and exactly. a water deflated. slide. Big wet hairy man, let me jump on you. We'll ride it together. <laughs> no, but yeah, it, was, it, it sucked. Cause you ever been on like the little cheesy water slide? Like a hotel like has like their fancy pool with a water slide. Yeah, yeah, sure. So like I stayed at one with my cousins. And there was one side that had good water flow, and you'd make it all the way down the slide, but the right. left one, you wouldn't make it. No, no, yeah, And then you're yeah. just in the middle of the slide. And you just just dry ass in the middle yeah, of the slide. Yeah, it's kind of like... <laughs> you know what my tip is on that, <laughs> as far as the slide goes? Have you ever seen those, uh, have you ever seen those uh, Pam and Tommy Lee recreational boats that you can rent out for like a couple days? Like or a pontoon a, boat? A pontoon boat, but you're on it for a month or a week. You give or... a credit to Pam and Tommy That's Lee. That's the first time I've ever seen one. You went to Had Pam. you ever seen one before that? Yeah! Yes. Where did you ever see one before that where people any actually Any lake, any anywhere, bay. every Pots summer. Boats are everywhere. It fits a body of it. Water, Time there's out. a pot. But you, you saw it on a rent, sex video? To rent it? The, wait, the first time it. you. Yes. You'd heard of this before that. Yes. you got to be kidding. I don't know anyone I mean, that I lived owns in the middle of nowhere boat. and I ain't ever saw one. I've never seen it. But they have a slide on it off the top where you can just kind of, you know, like hook it up. Yeah. You seen that before? Yeah, we know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we, so you saw this in the se- there's yes, a sex yes. tape and you're like, did you see that boat? I noticed the boat. That's what you it, get out of the Tommy like, Lee Pam it, Anderson. You sex know what is the boat? It looked like a fun time. You know, you could <laughs> just go out and you could park your boat. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could swim. You could grill out. Whatever you want to do. That was your introduction. You do your Tommy and uh, Pam stuff. That's a fine. That's too. your introduction to the pontoon. I've never boat. seen one of those before, where you could rent it. I've seen a pontoon boat. But I didn't realize that they had these places where, like, on one lake, there's like twenty of those. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. go and you rent them for like a week or two or three days. I did not. I did not know that. You know, I you think- can rent jet skis. 
<laughs> I did know that. So wait. I, I did know that. Again, I, out of the sex tape with Tommy Lee and Pamela Anderson, mm-hmm. the thing that you took out of it oh, be quiet. was that you could rent a pontoon boat. Hell yes. Come on, man. I you know me. I mean, like, that's the first time I've ever seen one. It, it really was. And that's for what rent? I remember most from for the rent? video. Are you kidding me? All right. See, like this. Yes. Okay. But yeah. it has. But it's it has, a pontoon boat. Okay, see what I'm saying? And there's a slide, right? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Because that's a pontoon boat. I know. I've never seen one that you could rent. Before. I mean, that's a nicer one. But that's sure. what I mean. You can live on it for like you know, like a week, and you just hang out. I don't know. Looks fun to me. I didn't realize how rich I grew up. You did. I mean, where is this Deep Creek just Lake? Seeing where, them. where did you live? This this Deep Creek Lake, Ocean City, Maryland, back in the Bay. Gotta, like no pontoon way. boats are everywhere. Lake huh. Ontario, Lake anything. Lake wow. right. Just okay. Lake anywhere. You guys are lucky, man. Yeah, we're, we're. I wasn't on one, but I've seen one. Okay. My buddy had the fastest one, in Deep Creek Lake. No way. Yeah, because it had no furniture. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> That's safe. It just had the steering column. <laughs> <laughs> and no one got hurt on any of those idiot adventures. No, you just get like camping chairs or plastic chairs and. Yeah. Same I've difference. never been jet skiing where I didn't absolutely physically destroy my human body. My body hurt. Like, I messed up my shoulder, screwed up my wrist. Like, you can just go jet skiing and be fine. I mean, I've only done it, a few, like, two times. All right. Stand up or sit down? Sit down. Okay. I haven't tried to sit down yet. Maybe, Maybe you need to do that. Oh, man. Maybe you need oh, to yeah. sit down. It just seems like when it, I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, bro, but, like, lots of you every time team. you get on a jet oh, ski. I was probably 18, 19 years old. <laughs> I was saying 1985. Yeah, I don't know that you can even find a stand-up one now. Know. That was the only kind they had. <laughs> I don't know. It's been a while. It's like Jaws 3. Hey, man, <laughs> it's all new to me. It's all new to me. Pontoon boats. Mario Van Peebles was on top of the world. <laughs> Hell, yeah. I watched Byron Island last night. Did you? <laughs> Men's room blank question. It was uh, supposed to be a fun time, and then blank effed it up. 844-999-OLA. Hello, Renee. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. Hey, Renee, you familiar with pontoon boats? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, if not, I was going to suggest you watch the Tommy Lee, Pamela Anderson sex video. You know what? It's a nice boat. <laughs> I'm just amazed. All right, Renee, what? so what was supposed to be a fun time? Um... So I went out for karaoke with my boyfriend, my boyfriend's brother, and his brother's fiance. And we're all having a great time. I had, like, a couple drinks, and all of a sudden, I felt very, very sick. I couldn't talk. I couldn't walk. I started puking everywhere, and I got roofied. No. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. How did... Were you at a Bill Cosby show? How did people not know that you were with... Other people that that seems like what? When do you? I don't uh, think people. I don't care. think if you're drug, if you're gonna drop somebody, a roofie, yeah, you don't care yeah. that they're with another dude. Oh, well, I'm I'm pretty sure it was the bartender um, because he's the only person that touched my drink besides me. Um, my boyfriend didn't even hand me a drink. Not that I don't think know, he would roofie need. you. I mean, that's... well, he wouldn't need to. Renee, you, <laughs> um, Renee, did you go? Yeah. Did you go back to this place? No. Okay. Yeah, I might have gone back uh, if that if I thought that happened to my girlfriend wife uh, just to investigate and see what the hell's going on there because that might piss me off a, a whole lot. Yeah. No, I I haven't been back and uh, my boyfriend called EMTs because I was pretty sick and he I don't remember this but he told me that the EMTs were actually making fun of me because they didn't believe that something had happened. They thought I was just Wasted. Really plastered. I mean, look, even I'm, then they have every reason to believe that. I get what their gig is, but like, like anything, like when I talk trash about people, it's behind their back, right? Isn't that even what we teach yeah. our kids? Yeah. Like, don't point at the dude at the grocery store with the one eye. But as soon as we get right. outside, you can talk about them Do all the you want. jokes. Right, it's exactly. Thing. It's the same thing. The AMT is like, hey, man, just crack your jokes in there. Yeah, I'm sure. How too- long did it take for this to affect? So after you started drinking, like how long was it from the time you started drinking your drink until the, the effects started happening? Well, I had, like, two drinks at that bar, um, and maybe half an hour after we'd been there, I felt like something was wrong, so... Um, How about your friend? My boyfriend. I'm sorry? How about the other girl at the party? She was fine, um, but I don't think she was drinking that night. I think she was supposed to be driving. Ah, okay. Right. That's and- uh, Man, that's a weird... That's a weird world, isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, you know, it's a little I, weird. I, I guess, I guess you wouldn't know somebody who does that. They would never admit to doing it. It would never be part of their. Yeah. Game, Where would you, know you even go to right. get? You know and what I mean? Like, I wouldn't like, even know how to start. I just have to hope you and, keep drinking why, tequila. And, and if I'm the bartender, I'm trying to make money off of you. Like, I can't. And this is why I question this. 
and maybe whether it was the bartender or not. Like they're not going right. to leave their shift. They're if they're there at night, they're going to be there until they have to close three morning. Whatever. Yeah, it is. More than likely, if you're going to be knocked out with whatever time it takes from the time that you ingest that pill or whatever the hell it is until the, mm-hmm. you know, it's going to be a half an hour or an hour or however long it is. But he, he's not going to make any more money. And they'd have to throw you out of the bar. Trust me when I tell you. What's what's the advantage? If you fall asleep at a bar, they do ask you to leave. I have much experience. I do too. So I mean, being with Steve, yeah, (laughs) who falls asleep, your collateral damage, right? Oh no! Sorry, God. Yeah, that's uh, that's no good, man. Well, I'm sorry to get to the bottom of that, Renee. Oh man, this is going to be. I'm sorry, dude. I honestly, you're not sorry. I am sorry. You are not sorry. I'm not sorry. Not sorry. I'm not as sorry as I should be. You're not sorry. But I'm a little sorry. I'm a li- I am a little. You said not as much as you should be. Right. That we agree with. Yes. Okay, right. That's all I'm saying. Answer a blank question. It was supposed to be a fun time, and then Steve farted. <laughs> yeah. Eight four four nine nine nine. Ola. More your calls coming up. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Ola bitch, Ola. You have entered the men's room. All right, hang out. We got the drunk in charge, Ryan Castle, in the sense. Ten, ten songs that should not be played at a funeral on the way. And our question, men's room blank question. Ow. It was uh, supposed to be a uh, fun time, then blank effed it up. And uh, yeah, Renee, uh, who called earlier, that was a screwed up story about being roofied at a bar. What did you say that you got roofied or your friends got roofied, uh, Robin, in a bar in uh, Oregon? Yeah, it was uh, just a small group going out to have beers like you would. And everybody, one person started feeling strange. Uh, same symptoms that she just described, basically just feeling kind of nauseous and your head starts hurting. I'm going to assume that it's never the ugly person in the party. That, <laughs> I mean, like, I hate to be that well, person. Ah, actually, she, don't say that. No, it, no I, mean, I mean, who is it? I mean, because it, it, it could be everybody. It could be anybody. So they just they just walking by, dropping totally. people's Totally. Well, drinks. it was one of my guy friends that got the sickest. You're kidding me. No. He's a good looking guy, though. He, I mean, That's, to be I, fair. I mean, like, <laughs> what? So, so the end goal is what to just have somebody see pass who, out? right? So, I mean, you, what you just walk down the line, roofie all the drinks that are there, see who has a reaction, but stays. And Ted, you said and you had I, a friend who yes. thought he saw somebody do that to somebody's drinks. Yeah, and actually happened. bought two it's new sadly, drinks it for them all the time. Yeah, that's crazy. Because if you think you saw someone do it, assume they did. Yeah, well, that's going to ruin a good time for sure. By the way, Renee uh, hit us in the comments, and she said, "Hey, my best friend was listening and wanted to know why you guys assumed that the bartender roofied me." And I responded. Because you said I was roofied. So, I mean, that, <laughs> well, so we didn't know. We just went with it. By yeah. the way, another comment came in as far as just strange things happening when you go out. This one kind of cracks me up. It says, my wife and I were invited out to a disco night at random by our new friends. We just moved to town. We're excited to find out what the heck our friends meant by disco night. So we dress up in some funny Afro wigs and disco outfits. We show up at the bar, and we were the only ones dressed up besides our new friends. It was awkward at first, but we got super trashed saying disco karaoke. Moral of the story, don't trust new people, and karaoke can save a bad night. Disco night. Mm. Disco night. Men's room, uh, blank question. It was supposed to be a fun time, and then blank effed it up. 844-999-OLA. Hello, Austin. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, how's it going? Hola. Uh, so, my best friend and I, we have, a, like, a, we're very competitive, so... We started getting competitive with drinking beer, right? And we started doing beer bongs. Okay. And uh, he, I went, we went out to a party one night, awesome party. We were having fun, got pretty drunk. And uh, so then I started deciding to do beer bongs. So I put three beers in there. And then I'm like, hey, will you hold my, will you hold my beer bong for me? He's like, yeah, no, not a problem. So I go out, go take a piss, come back. And uh, I, I, I take my beer bong for like 10 seconds for three beers. I'm like, yeah, yeah, like having a good time, right? And uh, he, he, you know, very sly, he's just like, I hope you have a fun time. And I'm like, what? So Renee, how she got roofied, he practically roofied me, and he dumped five, five, six shots of Grey Goose in my beer bong and three beers. Oh. And uh, I don't know if you guys ever had that feeling before you're blacked out. You know you're gonna black out, and it was the worst feeling ever. I'm like, dude, I'm a, I'm about to black out. I'm, this is, this is, it was crazy. It was a weird feeling. How much time did you have between the time you knew you were going to black out and then the blackout hit? What was crazy is I had stages, so like I, I was like, I was like chipping myself out, and I went, I went through stages of being like, dude, this is sucks. This sucks. I gotta make myself throw up, and then I started you should have thrown up. Party, how, like, how old were you? I was probably like. 
18, 19. Okay, these are the these are the years when this stupid stuff happens. But yeah, I, I, I traditionally yeah. remember with a with a beer bong or whatever. If, if I needed to, I could definitely throw it up. But I never put three beers in there. It was always one beer. Right. I guess probably because uh, the size of my buddy's uh, funnel wasn't as big, so it's only big enough for one beer. Yeah. So like, I'm walking through the party. No, and I'm blacking out, having a fun time in the office. The main thing I remember is, like, put my fingers down my throat, trying not to get uh, alcohol poisoning. And I woke up the next morning, and my buddy just thought I hated him because I'm, like, halfway out of the car, passed out in the passenger seat. And I look at him. I guess I just gave him this devilish look, like, I'm going to kill you later. And then That's the appropriate I, look. That yeah, is the correct like, look to did, give. Did you did you ever drink with this guy again, or did you get him back? Of course, he drank with him. Again. I, I moved in with him not even that long ago. We <laughs> yeah. still have big, yeah. big yeah. majors and what. Okay, yeah, I mean oh, that's what no. you do, man. It's on. Well, that, that's no, the, no, the people no. that treat you the worst are probably your best friends, right? I mean, that's generally how, like you might get in a fight with someone you don't like, but the person that treats you the worst or sabotages you the most is probably one of the people you're closest to. Absolutely, especially at that age. Just like certainly, like it, it does not at make that it age. okay. Mm-hmm. But like, no, no, it doesn't. Right when you hear about these stories, it's like, yeah, we were eighteen, nineteen. Like, all right, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. but you also that's read the stories about uh, the only time we hear about Chuck E. Cheese, it involves people in their twenties and thirties who have gone to celebrate a little kid's birthday party, and it's in the news because fisticuffs were thrown in the adult section. But the thing with that is, that's just light beer. I've been to Chuck E. Cheese within the last year, thanks to my kids going to different. How birthday is parties. Chuck E. Cheese? I don't remember the pizza. Did you say the pizza was decent? I, I don't remember did. if I ate, but I remember that one, you know, I walk up and it's like, look, man, and, and the dude behind the counter, he can read my face. Clearly, I am here because of a birthday party. Well, he knows that. I'm a grown ass man and I don't want to be here. So I'm thinking they're beer because everyone told me like they only have like Coors Light or something like that. And I'm like, man, I need like I need beer, beer, right? You know, I got to be here for two hours or whatever it is. What was fantastic, the guy goes, oh, man, we, we've we expanded. They actually, they had Elysian products, mm-hmm. which I was like, holy cow. So then it became kind of cool. So I got two, like, decent beers. The kids had a great time, whatever. Although I will say, the uh, at this time, the band still played, like, Chucky and his, his people. Oh, yeah, yeah. They oh, pop yeah. up. Uh, I don't remember what age it was. It's either fourth or fifth birthday party. But uh, so... The guy who's supposed to kind of entertain the kids and be like, hey, kids, coming up in five minutes, you know, the band, blah, 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 your chance to meet Chuck E. Cheese. That Sweet. was his big song. Okay, right? all right. So this, like, 21-year-old kid who's, like, a theater major, he comes rolling out, and it's like, and he felt so good at this moment because he's been working with them for, like, an hour and 15 minutes, but now he's going to deliver the news that he just knows is going to make them go, wow. And that's the fact that in a few minutes. The rat's coming out. You can meet the rat. Like, he will Sweet. physically man so the kids are kind of excited and then this giant seven foot son of a bitch comes walking out man and i mean all their mouths pop open and none of them why wanted because it's a giant rat all right you know human beings have a natural aversion to rats anyway right and now you have a seven foot tall one it's like hey kid like none of these kids wanted anything to do with it and i thought that was great see i would have thought they liked the rat not, not, look, man, they have a tr- problem with Santa Claus. Think about Santa Claus. Yeah, but they like Mickey Mouse. They like Mickey Mouse because Mickey Mouse is Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse has already made an appearance. Mickey Mouse is already entertained. Chuck E. Cheese, he's like, welcome to my home, and there's lots of stuff to do, but you've never met him. And then when he comes walking out, it's, uh, it's different, man. <laughs> Men's room blank question. It was supposed to be a fun time, and then blank effed it up. 844-9990. Ola, more of your calls coming up here in seconds. Hola! The shenanigans continue on the Men's Room Radio Network.